Next generation meteorologist Joe Shock here with the tropical update for August 27th, 2022. And boy, do we have a lot to talk about today in the tropics as we round out the month of August. We finally are seeing the tropics wake up with an area of disturbed weather in the central MDR, the main development region. And this as I think the beginning of at least an active two, if not three week period, and we're gonna go through all that, but basically most of our time will be focused on this area that's in the MDR, which is being very well advertised by the models to potentially be a problem down the road. So that's what we'll be doing in today's video. Uh, here is the uh, GFS ensemble. You can see the MJO. We always, I always like to start broad, global patterns, and then I like to dig deeper. That seems to be a pretty good format to set these things up. So. GFS ensembles, you can see over the next couple of days, uh, going into phase two, and then it gets a little um, wild, I guess you could say, after that, as the uh, members are not so sure what the MJO will be doing after that. But certainly, we are going to get into phase two as we get ready to close out the month of August and the begin the month of September. The European, uh, I would say, less amplitude in the phase two than back into the null phase over the next uh, 10 to 15 days. The JMA has some pretty good amplitude, but then takes it too back into the null phase. And the null phase is there is no MJO forcing present. So that means it's non existent when it's in that null phase. So it's uh, not really a driver of the weather pattern, global weather uh, pattern. Uh, the Australian, the Bureau of Meteorology down in Australia, uh, same kind of thing. It comes into phase two and then comes back into the null phase. And then later in September, you can see it tries to come out into some of those other phases down the road. So mainly we're focusing on phase two and you can see, oh, look at this. Phase two lights up the MDR, lights up the East Coast. That's interesting. Look at that very, very strong correlation. Okay, with the stuff that's coming across, phase two for this upcoming week, something's gonna probably develop. Look at these ocean temperature anomalies. You know, one, if not even two degrees Celsius across the entire MDR, very, very warm in the Caribbean, very, very warm. And the North Atlantic, Northwest Atlantic, Gulf of Mexico. So we are loaded and ready to go here with the ocean temperature anomalies and the ocean temperatures themselves. I'm going to outline here with my cursor. Uh, 80 degrees, 26 Fahrenheit here pretty much off in New Jersey. Due east, well up into the North Atlantic, north of 40 north, maybe even 41, 42 north up here. And then, of course, over here by the Azores and then sneaking around here, then just south of the... Canary Islands north of Cape Verde, and then the Kids Africa right over here. So pretty much where these hurricanes over the coming days, weeks, and months will be tracking will be in the 80 to 90 degree water. And yes, I said 90 because the Bahamas is 89 to 91 degrees, and also the eastern Gulf of Mexico in the upper 80s, if not lower 90s. You can see there on the coloring some splashes of 32 degrees Celsius showing up. So that is just incredibly warm so and you can see even here in the Gulf Stream off the Carolinas probably some 31 C showing up there uh, upper 80s 87 88 89 degree water showing up here in the Gulf Stream up to probably just east of the Outer Banks in that um, darker shading of red but this here and the Bahamas uh, 90 degree water very very dangerous situation uh, for tropical cyclones to ramp up quickly if the upper level pattern is going to be conductive for that, and I think it will be at least for the next two weeks, and I think there's going to be some big problems in the first week of September. Uh, here is the ocean heat content. You can see some very, very high values associated in the Bahamas and, of course, along the East Coast within the Gulf Stream, and these values only get stronger the further west you come in the MDR, so certainly a situation uh, that would favor rapidly intensifying tropical cyclones. How deep down in meters does 80 degree water go? Well, a lot of areas, give a minus a plus a few meters, you know, pretty much this entire area, uh, 75 meters down, which is several hundred feet down, you can find 80 degree water. So that means that there's a lot of energy well deep into the ocean. And that means even if a hurricane comes through, mixes up the ocean, you're still pulling up, you know, waters that are at least 80 degrees or warmer. So if we have, in theory, the wave that's coming across now, let's say if this is coming north of the Puerto Rico, the Dominican, uh, by next weekend as a major hurricane, it's mixing up all that ocean water. We're still pulling up 80 degree water. It's not like the water is going to cool down to 75 degrees with a hurricane, you know, in theory, 
uh, tracking you know, north of the islands like that or anywhere really in the basin, we have a very deep well of 80 degree water. And that's very, very concerning as we're now getting into the peak of the hurricane season over the next two to three weeks. Uh, potential energy intensities, you can see here, this is the potential central pressure. You could definitely see in the Bahamas, you know, under 900 millibars, which is just incredible. Anything really under 970, 980, you know, is a pretty good, you know, Cat 1, if not even Cat 2 hurricane. And that pretty much is up to the coast of New England at this point. And then the categories themselves, you can see uh, category five to the pretty much just south of the, I guess I didn't say mid Atlantic, but a major hurricane. And, uh, let's see, a major hurricane. They start that at purple. So you can see them just to the east off the mid Atlantic. And then quickly ramping up to Category 5, but certainly from where this wave is going to be, all the way to the Outer Banks of the Carolinas, in theory, if everything is correct, you can support a Category 5 hurricane. And in the Bahamas, really like what we saw with Hurricane Dorian in 2019, September 2019, uh, wind gusts you know, up to 160, 165 knots, and Dorian got to, I believe, 190 for a little bit there in the um, Bahamas. There was also a very slow-moving storm, so this is uh, quite concerning as I think there will be that feature coming across. And again, uh, you'll see that here uh, just a little bit. Now, here's the upward motion pattern on the JMA. You can see the uh, blue is rising air. The yellow orange is a sinking air. So this begins today going through next week. You can see where the enhancement is. You can see the enhancement of precipitation here in the Caribbean. There's the classic ridging over troubled water with the lower heights down in the tropics. Week two looks like this. The tropical cyclone is probably somewhere along the East Coast. Uh, you can see the classic ridging over tr troubled water. That very, very troubling. Uh, ridge over Hudson Bay, you know, in the wintertime that can support big nor'easters along the Northeast and East Coast. And there seems to be a trough split possibly or some kind of troughing over the Southeast. And that could be a problem if there's a hurricane sitting in the Bahamas for obvious reasons as that could try to come up hit the United States, either the Southeast or be a Florida to Massachusetts, you know, Southern New England, a kind of rudder uh, like we've seen in 54. And if you go to my website, joesweatherconsulting.com, you can see the blog I put out a little bit over a week ago about how dry it's been in the Northeast and the relationship to the 1954 hurricane season. So that may be something you want to go check out. So here's the zero Z, uh, 12 Z is coming in now, but here's the zero C ensemble for the uh, tropical storm strike. This is valid through Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Friday night, uh, for this upcoming week, you can start to see the values get enhanced. Uh, next, uh, Monday night, you can see it now coming into the islands in the um, Bahamas. And then here, uh, Wednesday night, you can see the ensemble here somewhere within the Bahamas uh, by September 7th, the Wednesday night, September 7th. And this is the um, hurricane probabilities, which are continue to increase as well. This is valid uh, Wednesday, September 7th at 8 p.m. You can see... Uh, 10 to 20 percent chance of a hurricane being in this area, roughly, um, and about let me see, our 288, so roughly about a 12, 11, 12 days away. But overall, you can see what the ensemble looks like there. There's a few members that try to curve this out earlier, but I think that this is going to get very close, if not into the Bahamas in the longer term. Now, looking at the steering, here we are, day 10. The systems in the Bahamas. Here's this kind of trophic thing. That's why you can see a few members trying to take it out. If this trough is deeper. It comes up and may get an escape route, uh, maybe near Bermuda, but you can oversee here a lot of that ridging and some troughing developing here in the south. By our 300, there's that ridging that you saw in the JMA, and there's the blocking over Greenland. That's uh, high latitude blocking. Some kind of troughing might be developing here along the east coast, the hurricane somewhere within this whole mess. And then by day 15, our 360, uh, the storm's probably getting ready to leave, but still a lot of blocking like this called the Newfoundland wheel. And uh, this can uh, trap hurricanes uh, along the East Coast and particularly impact New England in the longer term. And there's that classic ridge, the uh, mid-Atlantic ridge there uh, with the west, with the easterly flow coming around and then becoming southwesterly. So we'll see what this looks like, you know, in the longer term. You can see that little kink in the 588 line right here. So it's definitely seeing the lowering heights from a tropical cyclone somewhere being around here, probably September 7th through September 10th. So that's what it looks like at 500. Here is the European Ensemble through day 10, zero Z run. You can see what that looks like there. There's gonna be another feature that heads probably more Northwest and stays out. There may be a quickie in the Gulf of Mexico over this upcoming week from the feature that's here in the uh, Southwest Caribbean. We're gonna have to keep an eye on that as well. So that's what it looks like through the next 10 days. 
Here are the individual ensemble members, uh, hour 288, hour 324, hour 360, day 15. You can see the widespread course of ensembles uh, this far out in time is certainly no surprise. The GFS, the GEFS, uh, through uh, day 10 here, you can see, the uh, again, that feature. We'll have to watch here in the Western Gulf of Mexico. Here comes a feature that we're mainly focused on for now. This actually could be something we'll have to watch in the coming days. But uh, from, for the moment, this seems to be getting the most attention uh, from the guidance. You can see what the uh, GFS ensembles look like there. Now, this is from <coughs> last Thursday. Last Thursday, the European weeklies uh, had this tropical strike probability extended extent range here. You can see our 264 to 432, and it did a really good job, you know, in my opinion, you know, hinting at this feature that's coming out of here now. And you can see the uh, uh, 20 to 30 percent probabilities of scattering here in the western part of the basin, particularly focused south of New England, uh, of where there may be some fun and games uh, in the longer term for the first week of September. And yes, hurricane probabilities. Look at that. Eh? Bahamas up the east coast of New England. And look at that. And there's another cluster here near Bermuda. So that's certainly when I saw this last, you know, a couple of days ago, uh, this really began to draw my attention uh, to this. And now even more so since the guidance is really beginning to consolidate on this feature developing. Okay, so it looks like that is the end of our show today. I always keep forgetting if there's more in there because I get so involved. I thought I'd put some more ensembles on. But anyway, we have an interesting situation ahead. And I, I think we're going to have a pretty interesting two to three weeks. So that is it for now. And thank you for watching.